When I answered the phone, my sister-in-law said as if she was blaming me. Hello? You finally answered. What on earth were you doing? I've been calling you since this morning, but you never answered. Well, whatever. Please take care of my daughter today again. Hold on. I can't do that today. My sister-in-law tried to talk her way out of it, and I hurriedly refused, but she went on to say something outrageous. What do you mean, I can't do it today? You're a full-time housewife, so you're probably free anyway. And yet, you never answered the door, when I rang the bell multiple times this morning. So, I left my daughter all alone in front of your house. Huh? That's... I was so surprised that I couldn't speak. I'm Valerie, and I'm 35 years old. I've been married for 8 years, and I'm a full-time housewife. I'm living happily with my husband, who works at a company, and our four-year-old son, in a house we built in Vancouver. My husband, Edgar, who is the same age as me, and I met through a mutual friend in college. Both Edgar and I moved to Vancouver when we started going to university, and as we talked, we discovered that we happened to be from the same city. Our conversation flowed naturally with local topics, and we became close, and soon we were in a romantic relationship. He was kind and dependable, and our relationship continued to go well, and we got married when I was 27. Camillo, our son, was born and, I was finding a little happiness in my ordinary days. One day, as Camillo turned four years old, we were talking about going somewhere to celebrate his birthday. I want to go to the zoo to see the baby panda. With an innocent smile, Camillo said, and Edgar affectionately patted his head and said, the baby panda? Oh, yeah, they were talking about it on TV before. All right, let's go to the zoo next Sunday. Camillo's eyes sparkled, and he said while dancing around in excitement. Yay! Thank you, Dad. I'm looking forward to it. Lately, Edgar has been busy at work, and I have been thinking that I wanted to give him a relaxing break on weekends. However, Edgar always prioritizes us over himself, and he values the time we spend together as a family more than anything. While worrying about his health, I was grateful for his kindness. One day, after putting Camillo to bed, I headed to the living room to finish up the remaining housework. There, Edgar started talking with a somewhat troubled look. Valerie, I have something to discuss. What's the matter? When I asked, Edgar continued. So, my sister is moving to our neighborhood, because of her husband's job. Her daughter, Annika, is the same age as Camillo, and my sister wants to bring her here so they can play together. What do you think? My sister-in-law, Ramona, is three years older than my husband, and has lived far from where we live, so we've had very little interaction. Ramona had a cheerful and bright personality, and when we got together at my in-law's house, she my mother-in-law and I had so much fun together. With no particular reason to refuse, I readily agreed to it. Two weeks later, as planned, Ramona and Annika came to our house. We're here. Edgar, Valerie, long time no see. Has Camillo grown bigger? Ramona, it's been a while. Please come in. Ramona was as cheerful and energetic as ever, while Annika appeared nervous and was holding her mother's hand. As I invited the two into the living room, Ramona started to get excited like a child. Wow, I've heard from mom, but your house is really fancy. Having such a big house in the heart of the city. Your financial situation must be so good. I'm envious. It's not such a big deal. You are making me embarrassed. Although he tried to calm her down while he looked troubled, Ramona didn't seem to care. While I was pouring juice into glasses, Ramona wandered around the house, opening all kinds of doors, including closets, to see what's inside without permission. Please don't go in there since that's our bedroom. It's not like anything's getting used up, so it's fine. Wow, even the bathroom is spacious. Nice. Is this a walk-in closet? This is a nice-sized closet. Ah. Uh. I'm so jealous. 
Surprised, I hurriedly followed her and asked her to stop, but, she completely ignored me. After exploring for a while, perhaps she was satisfied, Ramona returned to the living room and plopped down on the couch. She finished her juice in one gulp, handed me the empty glass, and said. Ah, uh. that was fun. Valerie, I'm still thirsty, so can I have another glass, please? Somewhat exasperated, I poured more juice into the glass and handed it to her. Ramona drank it all in one go and suddenly started to speak. By the way, my husband is suddenly going on an overseas business trip. We only moved here three months ago, so it's really inconvenient. It's a long-term trip, so I thought of going with him, but Annika just started kindergarten, and I had just landed a part-time job. So, I decided to have my husband go by himself. That sounds tough. I murmured, and Ramona continued, Yes, it is. Even though it's a part-time job, balancing work and housework is hard. Annika is still young, and she seems lonely without her dad. You are a full-time housewife, Valerie, so if you have to take care of one more child, that shouldn't be a big problem, right? I just need you to take care of Annika when it's convenient for you. Taken aback by the sudden request, I couldn't hide my confusion. However, I could easily imagine how hard it would be to work while doing housework and taking care of Annika, so I couldn't outright refuse Ramona's request, and reluctantly agreed to it. All right. I answered, and Ramona immediately started preparing to leave, and said, Thank you. I knew you'd say that, Valerie. Well then, I'm off to work now, so please take care of Annika. Huh? You're leaving right now? I asked in surprise, but she left at lightning speed. I stood there dumbfounded and stunned, and it seemed that Edgar was the same way. We looked at each other, and we froze for a while. Valerie, I'm sorry that my sister is causing trouble for you. When Edgar mumbled, I came to my senses and tried to respond cheerfully. It's okay. It can't be helped if it's work. After that, Ramona frequently left Annika with me. One day, while I was spending time with Camillo at the nearby park, Ramona showed up, holding Annika's hand. While I was feeling a sense of dread, we exchanged greetings, and as expected, she said. Hello, Valerie. I have to go to work today again, so please take care of Annika for me. Isn't it Saturday? Aren't you off? I asked, and Ramona looked at me as if she was looking down on me. I guess you, who is a full-time housewife, may not understand this, but when you have a job, you can get called in even on your days off. I was irritated by her malicious words and actions, but I calmly told her, I'm sorry. I can't take care of her today as I have plans in the afternoon. From now on, could you please let me know in advance? I have my own plans too, so you can't just ask me on the spot like this. Ramona furrowed her brow, and approached angrily. What? What do you mean? Are you saying that you don't care about Annika? Unlike you, who is a full-time housewife, I'm working really hard. It's work, so there's nothing I can do about it, right? I'll pick her up around noon tomorrow, so take good care of her till then. Ramona just said it and walked away without waiting for my response, leaving Annika behind. Annika looked sad and lonely, and I let out a long sigh. A few days later, Camillo and I were at the local supermarket to buy some groceries for dinner. When I saw my son enthusiastically talk about his day at kindergarten, my face unintentionally lit up with a smile. When I was slowly making my way through the aisles, thinking about the menu for dinner, Camillo stopped at the meat section and said loudly. Mama, can we make fried chicken? I really love your fried chicken. Though I was surprised, I agreed, picked up a pack of chicken thigh, and placed it in the cart. Suddenly, someone called out from behind. Oh, Valerie, what a coincidence. Hearing the familiar voice, I felt uneasy, but I couldn't ignore her, so I responded with a forced smile. Hello, Ramona. Are you shopping for dinner too? When I asked, she replied without a hint of remorse. Not really. 
Today, I'm going to a stylish bar for a company dinner, and I've been waiting for you to show up. You usually shop around this time, don't you? So, can you take care of Annika today again? I'll try to come back by midnight, but we are going to have a few drinks, so I'm not sure how things will turn out. Anything for dinner is fine, so I'll leave it to you. Wait a moment. I have been helping her because I understood how difficult it was to manage household chores while working alone. But lately, it seems like Ramona has been going beyond reasonable limits. It doesn't make sense that she has to work at night and on weekends this often, when she is supposed to be working only in the daytime. Even today, she says she's going for a company dinner, but she's going out in a flashy and revealing outfit, leaving her daughter with me. Can't you think about Annika's feelings a little more? I mustered my courage and complained to Ramona. However, she didn't show a hint of remorse and laughed off my words, huh? I don't have time to listen to your pointless lecture. Well then, I'm counting on you. Wait a moment. After she finished saying that, she left without waiting for my response. Annika gazed at her mother's back with a lonely expression. Seeing her young face filled with sorrow, my heart ached. That night, after putting the kids to bed, I talked to Edgar about Ramona. I told him that it is strange that she leaves Annika with me so often, and I also told him that Annika seemed lonely. Edgar understood my feelings and said he would try to talk to his sister about it. No matter how much I tell her, she never listens to me, as if she looks down on me because I'm younger and of the same sex. Yet if Edgar talks to her, she might actually listen a bit. I went to sleep with a faint hope in my heart. The next day, Ramona showed up in high spirits a little after lunchtime. Hello. I had fun yesterday. Thank you, Valerie, she said. I stopped her as she was trying to take Annika home right away, and invited her into the living room. Although Ramona looked puzzled and concerned, when she saw Edgar's stern expression, she seemed to realize something and put on a sullen face. Sis, please stop leaving Annika with Valerie so often, disregarding Valerie's schedule. Don't you feel bad for Annika, too? When Edgar said, Ramona suddenly burst into tears and started shouting loudly. Wah! You guys suck! I'm raising my child while working all by myself, and it's not a big deal for you to take care of her once in a while. After all, since you guys are so fortunate, you'll never understand how hard it is for me. Then, she spoke to her daughter with tears in her eyes. Annika, you're only four years old, but from now on, you'll have to stay home all alone when mommy has to go out. Your uncle and aunt here are saying that. They don't care about what happens to you, Annika. It's all their fault, okay? Annika looked down and she was about to cry. My heart ached with sadness when I thought of my little Annika. It seemed that Edgar felt the same, and I suddenly realized that we were both comforting Ramona. Once Ramona was completely back in good mood, well then, I'll count on you next time again. She left, holding Annika's hand while she was saying such things. After that, Ramona not only left Annika with us frequently, but also started making me take Annika to and from kindergarten, and forced me to do troublesome tasks such as making her costumes for a school event and such. I was completely drained, so I turned to Edgar again for advice. Hey, it's about Ramona. When I brought up the topic, Edgar seemed to have understood everything, and with deep sincerity, he apologized. I'm really sorry for my sister causing you trouble. I know this is quite sudden, but I've got a six-month overseas business trip coming up. The location is Singapore, and it is relatively safe there. The company has also arranged accommodation, so if you don't mind, can you come with me? I was surprised by the unexpected news from my husband, but I quickly agreed and started preparing. A few weeks later, we arrived in Singapore. The accommodation provided by Edgar's company was more comfortable than I had imagined, and I was pleased. It was Camillo's first time abroad, and he seemed to be enjoying himself immensely. I felt that coming here was the right decision. While we were unpacking, my phone suddenly rang. When I checked, it was a call from Ramona. 
When I answered the phone, Ramona started talking in a reproachful tone. Hello. You finally answered. What in the world were you doing? I've been calling you since this morning, but you never answered. Well, whatever. Can you take care of Annika today again? Hold on. I can't do that today. She tried to talk her way out of it, and I hurriedly refused. But she went on to say something outrageous. What do you mean, I can't do it today? You're a full-time housewife, so you're probably free anyway. And yet, you never answered the door, when I rang the bell multiple times this morning. So, I left my daughter all alone in front of your house. Huh? That's... Before I could finish, Ramona continued, I'm actually in Guam right now with a friend I got close to at work. We've just arrived, but overseas trips are really amazing, after all. The excitement is off the charts. I'll be back in a week, so I'll leave Annika with you until then. Don't worry, I'll bring back souvenirs for you guys too. I said quietly in a trembling voice to Ramona, who was in a good mood. You left Annika in front of our house and went on a trip to Guam. I'll have to contact the police right away. We're in Singapore for Edgar's work right now, and we can't return for six months. Initially, Ramona had dismissed the idea of contacting the police as she thought that I was over Reesing, but as she listened to my words, even over the phone, it was evident that she was panicking. Oh no. Wait a minute. That's super dangerous. I thought you would take care of her like you always do, so I left her in front of your house, and now what are you going to do? As I stood there in a daze while my face turned pale, Edgar gestured and asked me to pass him the phone so I handed it over to him. He received the phone from me, and with an intense expression, like that of a demon's, he exclaimed loudly, Sis, get a grip! You left Annika outside and went on a trip to Guam? Are you even a mother? Isn't Annika important to you? What if she collapses from heatstroke or gets kidnapped? What would you do? I could hear Ramona's shouting voice leaking through the phone, but Edgar continued calmly, I've reported to the police earlier, and Annika has been safely rescued. However, that doesn't absolve you of your wrongdoing, so be prepared for the consequences. Also, I've informed your husband about this situation. He said the same thing, but you should go home and apologize to Annika right away. Huh? Shopping at the duty-free store? Who cares? That's not important right now. Just go back to Canada immediately. After telling Ramona this, Edgar ignored her who continued shouting and ended the call. After that, Annika was temporarily placed under protective custody at the child welfare office, as her father was in Italy on a business trip. Ramona made excuses that she couldn't get a flight and finally returned home three days later. She was carrying a lot of souvenirs in both hands, making it obvious that her excuse was a lie. The police questioned her rigorously, and it was revealed that she went to Guam with her lover. The lover was also married, and it became a big problem. In the end, Ramona was arrested by the police for neglect of a child. She was asked for a divorce, lost custody of her child, and was also cut off from her family. She was abandoned by everyone, and she became all alone. Before her mother's trial began, Annika was taken to Italy by her father who had come back to Canada temporarily. Six months later, after Edgar's overseas business trip, we returned to Canada and were living an ordinary and peaceful life. We started receiving letters from Annika regularly, which became one of the highlights for our family. In the envelope that arrived on that day, there was a photo of Annika with the brightest smile, and a letter written on a paper with a simple design was enclosed. In the letter, it said, Auntie's fried chicken was really delicious. Camillo, let's play together again. We couldn't help but smile as we felt warmth, from the words written in little kids' poor handwriting, 